We are honored to present a very recent discovery of an underground megalithic structure in a region called Caucasus, or also called Caucasia. That's a region in Russia. And these are fairly recent excavations done during the last few years or so, carried out by the research group of Vadim Chernobrov. And this archaeological site is so new that not long ago it did not even have a proper name. Well, we have some good news. We now know the location and name of the site. It is found in the Caucasus Mountains near Cavardino Balkaria. And so the site is appropriately named the Cavardino Balkaria Shaft. Very little is known about its origins. There is still no attempt to even date the location at this point. The only things that the local legends tell us is about the hill or mountain peak that it is located in. And the legends say that this particular peak was actually man-made. All the peaks around there are natural. However, this one is said to be made by giants. And that happened in such a remote period of time that this nation, who has this legend, says that it was so long ago that even we don't remember it, though we've lived here for thousands of years. Well, I guess man-made by giants doesn't sound very well. Probably it should be giant made by giants. <laughs> the end dream to this um, whatever giant made cave or underground structure is quite unimpressive. It just looks like some sort of dangerous hole in the ground. If one starts going down on, or making its way down this hole, in the beginning there is about 7 meters of a uh, kind of tunnel which is about 70 centimeters wide. So at this point it is still relatively easy to get in. As one continues to go downwards, one reaches a kind of a flat surface and it feels like that's the end, there is nothing more. However, um, further excavations showed that this is just part of a staircase. As one continues to crawl vertically in the narrow tunnel downwards, the walls become uh, even smoother better preserved, not so eroded and stuck with all kinds of material that has been falling in the cave during the long period of time that it hasn't been used. And um, the stones on the side are quite well uh, leveled, they are very very smooth. Sometimes the way they fit with each other is perfect. You cannot insert anything in between the stones. Sometimes there is a bit of space in between them. There are different variations of how the stones fit each other. And um, this smooth tunnel, more or less even and more uniform than the top, continues for a couple of dozens of meters. So it goes quite deep. And actually the atmosphere inside at this point very much resembles the tunnels in the Great Pyramid. The stone blocks on the sides are quite similar, the quality of work is quite similar, the size is quite similar. So um, that's the feeling one gets when one is in those tunnels. The quality of the masonry work in the structure is quite high. The stones are very, very smooth. They have managed to stay in place for probably a very long time. And unlike, for example, the Egyptian pyramids, which are not located in an area of the Earth with high seismic activity, this location is on an area with high seismic activity. Strong earthquakes are much more common than Egypt, and still the structure has withstood the onslaughts of time. So it is quite well made, actually. Although the archaeological site, as you can see on the photos, is in great condition in general, still it's obvious that there were times in the past when stones had fallen inside from the surface. In other cases, 
pieces of the structure itself broke off and fell inside, during earthquakes probably, and fell down blocking this tunnel inside. And actually this is quite a dangerous excavation. In one case a person almost got killed by falling stones coming down from the sides of the tunnel as they were going deeper. And the main work during this excavation was to actually clear this tunnel out. Even some heavy machinery was needed to break down the stones and clear a pathway just to allow them to continue through the tunnel. It becomes pretty obvious the structure has not been designed for people to move comfortably up and down the shaft. A slightly large or heavy set person would not be able to access all parts of the structure. They would eventually find themselves stuck somewhere. Only thin men and women are able to crawl completely all the way down, at least through the parts of the tunnel cleared away so far. As I already mentioned, some of the blocks perfectly fit where they meet. You cannot even insert a needle in between them, which is a typical mode of building for all megalithic structures all over the world. So that is the case with many stones, while in other cases there is some distance between the stones. And at this point it's impossible to say is the distance intentional? Was this this way when the structure was originally constructed? Or this happened later on with time and earthquakes shaking the structure? We cannot say at this point. This is one of the open questions. Most of the stones don't have any building material or binding material between them. They just perfectly fit with each other. However, at some locations in this structure, we see also other version of building and there is some sort of building material in between the stones. So really, in this uh, archaeological location, we see a great variety of the distance between the stones. Here on this sketch, you can see at some point of excavation, probably this sketch was made some two, three years ago, and that marks the progress of how much of the structure has been excavated at that point. The two drawings show the giant made cave from two different angles, front and side view. At this point, the expedition of Vadim Chernobrov has been able to penetrate some hundred meters below the surface. As you can see, in the beginning there is a kind of narrow tunnel and after that kind of hole opens, although it's a bit too flat to be a proper hole the way we imagine it. But the full thing is, is not at all uh, small, as I said, 100 meters below the surface. That is quite a big structure constructed by huge megalithic stones with very flat surfaces. At its widest point, this structure is about some 40 to 45 meters wide. Even at this very early point of excavation, this structure is already the largest so far found in Russia. And the general feeling that one gets from this archaeological site is that this is only the tip of the iceberg. It looks like some sort of technological construction. There are still more tunnels which are currently full of stones. They are not yet cleared, not yet opened. And the members of the excavation themselves have the feeling that they have not yet reached the chambers from where the humans or giants or whoever operated all this technical equipment or structure for whatever purpose it may have served. So definitely there are more tunnels to be opened, to be cleaned up for further research and study. It's a, a real ongoing project and this is only the beginning. And by the way, what you saw in the sketch earlier that was referred to as a kind of hole. When put into three-dimensional perspective, actually it looks quite more complex than that. Instead of just some hole in the ground, 
It is a chamber somewhat shaped like that of a flag blowing in the wind. That's more or less the look of it. A column-like structure that is located within the flag-like chamber as it stands about 30 meters high. The mysterious thing about this column is that, well, it's still standing for one thing, the way it holds itself up is quite remarkable. It does so by leaning against one of the interior walls with just the very tip of one of its corners. So it is quite a mystery how such a huge 30 meter high column could still be standing after all this time and supporting itself over one single point touching one of the walls. The alchemists who were researching the archaeological site were not extremely keen on trying to touch it or move it because it looks almost kind of flimsy. Now on this photograph you can see members of the expedition but not underground. This is all taking place on the top of the hill or peak that contains this structure in itself. And actually at, at the later stage of the excavations the researchers noticed that what they were counting to be natural rock around was actually also man-made. The stones were the same as those used in the underground structure. Huge blocks, 3-4 meters wide and high. Uh, same materials, same quality of work. And now this starts to touch another very interesting question about this archaeological site is how did they manage to actually build it? The most similar thing that we know of in terms of ancient construction would be the Egyptian pyramids. The quality of work and the size of these stones is more or less the same. Although in Egypt it is still extremely questionable how they were able to drag all these stones from so far away and place them on top of one another, people have at least come up with many kinds of explanations slaves, animal power. Some people include UFOs and helicopters and other fantastic means of moving the stones. But for Egypt it is much easier because there is still some sort of support. You have the earth beneath, you have the ground, the surface, and you only have to worry about how to drag them. While here in Cavardino, we have same size of just enormously huge stone blocks, but instead making an underground structure with such an odd bottle flag shape having a large chamber beneath and just a little narrow opening at the top, it really goes beyond comprehension. How did they do this? One cannot even begin to make a serious explanation. So the question of how these stones were moved is much more complex here than in the case of Egypt. And the feeling that Vadim Chernobrov is having at this point is that at the time that they built it, it was not an underground structure. It was an on-ground structure. And the current so-called hill, or mountain peak, around it is actually part of the structure, just as the local legends say. So, basically, we come to the same conclusion found in other New Earth videos that the legends are actually extremely valuable and very trustworthy sources for historical information. Something else interesting that you can find on this giant made hill are a couple of stone mushrooms which haven't been yet studied in detail. Although the full structure is made of stone currently, originally there was a metal, long metal rod which was stretching between the two walls of the tunnel at some point. This photo is an attempt to make some sort of parallel between the internal tunnels of the Great Pyramid and those in underground chambers uh, found in Caucasus, Russia. The common thing between them is that in both cases 
these are tunnels that are not uh, really meant to be used by humans regularly in terms of the humans doing much inside. And they don't seem to be comfortable for uh, passing through them, for example, let alone doing things inside. And by the way, on this photo, you see the Great Egyptian Pyramid and the Caucasus Cabardino structure side by side. And they appear to be more or less the same size in height. Well, they're not made to look the same for the purpose of getting a cleaner looking sketch. In reality, they are almost the same size. Another feature they have in common is that they both have tunnels that are too narrow to accommodate a human being inside. In the same way that robots were sent out to take images of very thin tunnels inside the Egyptian pyramid, there are similarly sized small tunnels leading away from this larger structure, and those need to be studied further. For now, when they put their LED lights inside, they cannot even see to the end of these tunnels. And the only thing they can do at the moment is take photos from just the starting point of these tunnels. So really there is uh, much more to be studied at this archaeological site. Although nowadays there are steps built inside the bigger tunnels of the Great Pyramid, they were not part of the original construction. They are modern additions for the tourists and scientists to get inside. There were no steps or other elements that would facilitate the penetration of humans within that structure of the Great Pyramid. And we see the same situation in the Caucasus underground chambers. Well, thank you so much for listening to this presentation. This was actually only a general overview of the most important points about this very interesting archaeological site. You can find the original lecture, two lectures actually, in Russian. The links to them is provided in the video description. What you saw presented here is not a translation by any means. It contains probably 20 to 30 percent of all the information, though it contains the most interesting one. And if you are really interested to know more, one source you could contact is the Kosmopoisk organization, which is led by Vadim Chernobrov. They also have many other interesting expeditions, and they have branches not only in Russia, they have branches abroad as well. So those who are interested in deeper study of this actually very important archaeological site should be contacting Vadim Chernobrov directly. Well, have a nice day, and we hope you have learned something today.